Hi, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining for this topic today. My name is Schaefer Bader. I'm an endocrinologist at UC San Diego, where I work with Steve Edelman. And um, today I'm going to be talking about continuous glucose monitoring, or CGM, in type 2 diabetes. And this is an area of interest of mine and also an area that's really grown a lot in the past few years and will continue to grow for the foreseeable future as these technologies have improved and become more widely available. So it's something that I think um, we're going to see more and more within the future. So the goals today are really to kind of give some background on what continuous glucose monitoring is and also give some um, information about the different types of CGM that are available on the market. Um, and, and also to talk about the benefits of CGM. Why, if you have type 2 diabetes and you're not using a CGM, should you think about using a CGM? Is there something that might benefit you? And you know, how this technology can actually help you um, in controlling your diabetes. So first off, you know, the, the technology has improved drastically over the years in terms of ways to monitor and, and test you know, your own blood sugar at home. And it used to be back in the day, you'd have to do this huge science experiment just to find out what the urine level was in, um, the, the glucose level was in your urine, no less in your blood. As glucose meters sort of came about, you know, that was a major improvement. And over time, those have gotten better and better, more accurate, faster, needing less blood, all of that type of thing. So, you know, this has kind of been for many decades now, these glucose meters have been sort of our standard of care to figure out, you know, what's going on with blood sugar at home. Um, but of course you have to prick your finger and there are many other limitations involved with these that we're gonna talk about some today. And um, ultimately over the last couple decades and really especially over the last decade of five years, the, the, the CGM or continuous glucose monitor technology has become better and better to the point where it's really been uh, adapted and, and usable for many different patients in clinic in the real world. And so um, as we've seen that these technologies have improved, we're seeing them being used more. So just to give you sort of a little bit of background on why CGM is so important, what it can add. So if we think that there's 1,440 minutes per day, which there is, and each of those minutes throughout the day, your blood glucose is changing. It's going up, it's going down, you know, it may be going up fast, it may be going up slow, but it's changing. That's how our body works. And if you're doing, using a glucose meter and you're doing finger stick checks, you're poking your finger, let's say you do that six times a day, which in my opinion is quite a lot. Some people do more, but six, days, six, six times a day is a lot. So if you're doing it six times a day with your glucose meter, you're only capturing 0.4% of the day uh, in terms of how much glucose you know, you know what's going on with your blood sugar. And the rest of the day, you don't know. Okay, so you're, we're missing a lot of information essentially. So what is a continuous glucose monitor? Well, you know, kind of the name is somewhat self-descriptive. It's, it's a device that will be continuously monitoring your glucose, right? But how does it work? So this is sort of what a typical CGM system looks like. And, um, it, you know, so it begins with basically a glucose sensor. And this sensor, is, this is a sort of a zoomed in, blown up version of it. So it's not really this big, but you know, this little sensor is like this little tiny wire, this little filament that's actually inserted right under the skin. It sits under the skin in that space. And it's the thing that's actually measuring the glucose. And depending on the CGM, that measurement happens every one minute to every five minutes or up to 15, every 15 minutes. Then there's a wireless transmitter that's attached to the sensor or included in the sensor sometimes. So in this case, it's this gray piece that's sort of clipped on. All this is, all the rest of this plastic and this gray transmitter is outside of the body. It's outside of the skin, just sitting on it. And this transmitter is sending glucose measurements to some type of receiver. And that could be a standalone device, you know, that basically stores and processes and collects this data, this glucose information, or it can be just an app on a smartphone. So it, increasingly we're seeing use of smartphone apps for that purpose. And really, ultimately, this provides, the CGM provides way more information than your A1C number can or your glucose meter can. Okay, so it gives us continuous glucose data, of course. And, and what do we use that for? Well, if, you know, if you're a person with diabetes, you can use that information to support your decision making, right? So helping you decide, you know, changes to your diet, you know, things that maybe you've eaten and see how they affect your blood sugar. You can see what exercise does to your blood sugar. 
You can use them for medication dosing, especially if you're taking insulin or something like that, where you can be adjusting the dose based on your blood sugars. So it's really giving you the information to empower you to make decisions. Um, there, there's more information with these, and we're going to get into some of these details, but there's something called glucose trend arrows on the CGM. And um, what that is, basically, it shows which direction your glucose is heading. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it staying pretty flat? And so, again, it's adding more information. Um, importantly, um, you know, many CGM also have alerts and alarms for high and low glucose values. And I think, um, you know, again, this is important because especially if you've had low blood sugars, if you've ever had a low blood sugar, or if you're on insulin or other medications that can cause low blood sugars, this can be a major safety issue. And so having um, an alert or alarm that can help, you know, let you know if you're starting to go low, you can prevent some of those problems. And the same for high blood sugars. If you want to know, hey, my blood sugar is 200 or it's 300, you can set that alert so that you have some idea if your blood sugars are getting too high. And there's also options for sharing with friends and family, loved ones, caregivers, whatever it may be, so that other people can also have some of this information if you want someone to kind of be your, your buddy and look out for you. And then finally, you know, the CGMs allow for glycemic reports. So all this continuous glucose data can, is basically downloaded and, and put in a report form. And initially, these reports were kind of put together for the healthcare provider to see so that they can look at all the stuff that's going on and, and make use of all that information to help, help you, you know, adjust your medications, you know, change your diet, whatever it may be. But increasingly, you know, these um, are being utilized, these reports are being utilized by patients to actually look at your own glucose information and, and, and use that. And I think that's really important. So I encourage people to do that. Okay, so let's talk about the A1C. Now, I'm gonna show you a little chart um, with, that includes three different people, glucose information from three different people who all have the exact same A1C of 7%, right? And 7% is a good A1C. So, so all these people have, a, you know, if we just saw their A1C, it's the exact same, and it's 7%. Now, just to get you oriented to this graph, so this is kind of what a, a continuous glucose monitor might show over a 24 hour period, like a full day, 24 hours, right? So each of these um, you know, lines, these squiggles represents the blood glucose of one of these three people. So you know, we see over here, this is 12 a.m. So this is basically midnight. And that's the start of the, the day, the 24 hour day. And then here's 12 noon. And then the next 12 hours gets you back to midnight, right? So it's a 24 hour day. And if you look at person number one here in the black line, you can see that their blood sugar is kind of all over the place. It goes high, it gets super high up here, like 300 maybe. And then they have this really low blood sugar way down here in the red zone. And then it goes back up. Maybe they were low and they had they ate a bunch of food to get out of that. And then they went super high again. So this person is just on a roller coaster, high low blood sugars, low blood sugars. But their A1C average Put, you know, is seven. So there's, they only see seven. Their average blood sugar is right here in the green area, even though they're having highs and lows. So contrast that with the person in green who has the exact same average blood sugar and the same A1C, but, you know, they, they have a much smoother day, right? An easier day and better blood sugars. And so that, you know, we'd, we'd all rather be person number three than person number one. Um, and without continuous glucose monitor data, you know, it's hard to know which of these people you are, right? So this is the information that we can get from a CGM that we can't get from an A1C. And this kind of shows the same thing, um, but with a, just a little bit different outlook. Same, same, same people, person one, person two, person three. And it shows, you know, how much time, percent of their time, each individual is spending in the target ranges. And the green is the good range. That's basically a blood sugar between 70 and 180. That's what we call time and range. And that's kind of our goal is to be in that range as much as possible. The red is low and we wanna avoid red. We wanna avoid those low blood sugars. Um, they, they can be dangerous. They're, they're really hard on the heart. They're bad on the body. And then the, in this case, the yellow is, is, are the higher blood sugars. So anything above, in this case, this example, anything above 180, right? So same A1C, completely different glucose control amongst these three people. And we can tell from the CGM. So let's talk about trend arrows, right? I mentioned them before. And really, this is a situation where more information is better. And I, I truly believe that. So what a trend arrow, you know, these are examples of trend arrows on two different CGM devices. And you can see that here in the middle, there's, you know, this person checked their blood sugar on the CGM. The blood sugar is 112. 
Um, and they have a little trend arrow here, and this arrow is pointed up at a diagonal, okay? And that means that their blood sugar currently is 112, but it's kind of slowly increasing. So it's slowly going up a little bit. This person over here, same idea. This person's blood sugar is 202, but with um, a sort of a diagonal arrow here. So this trend arrow, same thing, kind of slowly increasing blood sugar. So it gives you that idea of not only what your blood sugar is now, but where is it headed? Right, so where's the glucose going? That's what we want to know from trend arrows. And th these are just some examples um, from this device, which is the, the Dexcom CGM. It's a, one of the brands. And you know, the, it, you can have a flat trend arrow, which means that your blood sugar is pretty constant. It's not really going up or down. You can have you know, a slowly increasing. You can have a straight up arrow, which means it's increasing faster. You can have a double up arrow, which means it's really shooting up. Okay? And you can have all those same arrows going down. Right, so if you have two down arrows, then your glucose is dropping super fast. Right, so you can use that information to decide if, what you might need to do. And the reason is because you know if you're checking with just a glucose meter, you know all the, all glucometer readings are not created equal, and that's because they don't really tell us the trend of the glucose. They just give you one number at that moment in time. Okay, and so this is an example. This is somebody who um, you know was wearing a continuous glucose monitor. Um, but was also do, using their glucose meter to do some checks. Now on, on the CGM, let's, so here they had breakfast, right? And you can see that after breakfast, based on the CGM tracing here, this black line, their blood sugar went up and then it, it came back down. You know, maybe they took some insulin or their other medications. And after breakfast, it eventually came back down and it actually kind of dipped a little bit low and then came back to normal. So that's the, what the CGM would show us. Now, if they weren't wearing the CGM and they were only doing the glucose checks, what would they know? Well, they could check here and the blood sugar would be 150, right? But we wouldn't, they would not know that the blood sugar is actually going up. They could check here and it would also be 150, but it's the opposite scenario. So in this case, the blood sugar is actually falling and it's falling pretty quick, right? They're headed actually to a low. So, so here's a situation where, you know, the same, exact same number on the glucose, on the glucose meter, 150, doesn't mean the same thing. Okay, another example. Uh, here we have a, a blood glucose meter showing 220. Okay, so that's maybe you know a little on the high side. What do we do with that information? Well, if we had a CGM, we would know more. So here's a CGM showing a blood glucose of 220 with two up arrows, right? So it's 220 currently, but it's shooting up. That blood sugar is increasing. Okay. Here's the other scenario: blood sugar is 220, but it's falling really quickly, there's two down arrows, okay? And you would treat this, you might treat this differently. You might act differently if you saw these up or down arrows. So if this, you know, in this case, if the blood sugar is 220 and going up, you might wanna do something. You know, you might wanna go for a walk to try to bring that blood sugar down. If, if you're someone who takes insulin, this one might be a time to take some insulin. In this case, if it's 220, but it's coming down quick, you know, you, you might, not, not, might not need to treat it at all. Maybe you just wanna watch it and make sure you don't have a low blood sugar. So you're going to keep an eye on it maybe, but your, your intervention would be different. You know, you might, you wouldn't want to take a big bolus of insulin or something like that in this case. Okay. Another important feature um, of CGM are alerts and alarms. And, um, you know, here are some of the brand names, some of the different companies out there that make CGM. And I'll talk more about these specifically later, but we have Dexcom, Medtronic, and ever since, and all three of these um, CGM currently on the market all include alerts and alarms. There's another um, company that's uh, really important to know about, it's Freestyle Libre, that's the, the, the brand name of, of their CGM, and it's from Abbott. So the Freestyle Libre, the current version, does not include alerts and alarms, but the version that's coming out very soon is called the Freestyle Libre 2, is the updated version, will have these alerts and alarms as well. <clears throat> So what's the point of having alerts and alarms? Like I said, you know, you're going to want to know, you can set them to see if your blood sugar is getting very high or if it's starting to go low. And I think um, at the very least, you should have a low alert because you don't want to have low blood sugars. It can be very dangerous. And if you've ever had one, they're also extremely uncomfortable. They're unpleasant. So um, in this case, you know, back to the same person who had breakfast, um, you know, and then we see that the blood sugar came back down. It came roaring down actually and they ended up in this low level down here the blood sugar is probably like 60. now once they started feeling that low blood sugar you know then they checked um they basically checked this blood sugar and then they said oh crap i'm you know 70 my blood sugar feels like it's falling i gotta treat it i gotta drink juice 
and then they got their blood sugar to come back up. But this is a situation where this low maybe could have been prevented with a CGM that included an alert. Because you could set that alert at, let's say, 80, or you could set it even at 100, depending on, on your personal preference, so that as your blood sugar is falling, it'll let you know, hey, your blood sugar is 80, and it's, and it's on the way down, so maybe you want to eat something or treat it before it actually goes low. And so it's an opportunity to prevent low blood sugars. And for that reason, I feel that alerts and alarms are really important, and, um, and they should be used. I also mentioned you can share data with friends and family. So, you know, if you have a CGM on a child, um, that's a great, you know, thing to do is share it so you can kind of track and follow those blood sugars. But, they, you know, that works great also for other loved ones. So if, you if you're a person with diabetes, you have a CGM you want to share with your spouse or your, your friend or, you know, someone they know with diabetes, to just share with them to, you know, so they know what's going on, but also to have another set of eyes in case you have highs or lows or problems like that, then it's a good idea. Okay, so the last thing I was talking about was, so looking at your glycemic report to um, learn about your own glucose data. And so I just wanted to introduce this idea and kind of show you what some of these glucose reports look like so that if you have a CGM, you can actually download these and, and make sense of your own information. So this is from the Libre view, it's from the Freestyle Libre report, but they all have these sort of similar outlines with the same type of information. And this person, you know, this is the 14 day download. So basically this is 14 days worth of data. So continuous glucose data all combined onto this one page. And the average glucose for this individual over 14 days was, was 148, which is quite good, right? So that should be an A1C right around seven or maybe even a little bit lower. It shows the time in range, right? So our goal target here in blue is between 70 and 180. So this person it was in that range 67% of the time, which is pretty good. We, you know, our general target is above 70, but this is quite close. Um, the, you know, they are having some low blood sugars, less than 70. So this would be the first thing actually I would work on trying to fix, figuring out, hey, when, when and where are these low blood sugars happening? What can we do to prevent them, okay? And then lastly, this coefficient of variation and standard deviation, these are different measurements of glycemic variability, so fluctuations between highs and lows. So with both of these numbers, lower is better. So that would mean less variability. But um, in general, if you're looking just at the coefficient of variation, um, you know, if you have this at 30 or less, then you're doing very good. This is another part of the report, that's, and this is called the ambulatory glucose profile. So again, this is another one of those 24-hour days, right? Starting at, at midnight, and then here's 12 noon, and then here's midnight again. And this little graph shows all of this person's 14 days of glucose data in one place. So it's kind of all combined onto here so you can see what the glucose numbers are doing throughout the, the day, sort of on average. And this dark blue line in the middle is the average blood glucose at every time point um, throughout the day over that 14-day period. And then, you know, this gray or sort of, you know, light blue area that goes above and below that line shows the glycemic or glucose variability. So the kind of range of highs and lows that happen throughout that time point, you know. So if you're looking at this person, the first thing that I would look at actually is the low blood sugars because I said, hey, this is something we need to worry about. And so in this person, you can see that they're having these blood sugars less than 70 in the early morning. And there's a good chance that this person is asleep during this time and maybe without alerts or alarms might not even know these are happening. So the blood sugar here around 2 a.m. is, is some, some days is dipping below 70 down to 60s and 50s. And sometimes that's going on between 2 a.m. until about seven in the morning. So this is the first thing I would try to figure out, hey, what's going on? Is this you know, from insulin or, or a different you know, glucose agent, um, the anti-diabetes medication, what is it? Um, and then we also can see the next thing I would see is that, hey, in the, you know, during the day, the blood sugar looks really good. And then in the evening around 6 p.m., maybe this is dinner time, things start to get a little wonky. And you see this, this glucose variability, high blood sugars, lower blood sugars, kind of all over the place. And that carries into the nighttime so that when midnight comes around, this person starting off pretty high, but their blood sugar is dropping and it ends up in this low period. So anyway. It gives you an idea about what's going on in a simple snapshot. So I encourage you to look at these. What about um, what actual CGM devices are available right now and what's coming in the relatively near future? And that depends, of course, on the company, but it could be sometime this year, sometime in the next year or two. Currently available is the Freestyle Libre, which I mentioned before. 
and I really do think this is a great option for a lot of people with type 2 diabetes. Okay, this is a sensor that's worn. You may have seen these, you know, commercials or friends or people that have these. This sensor is worn generally on the back of the arm and it's worn for 14 days. It has a one hour warm up. It's really easy to put on. Um, and um, anytime you want to know your blood sugar, you take the reader or your smartphone if you have the app and you just swipe it over that section. You literally take it and physically go boop, right over it and it'll tell you what your, your blood sugar is right at that moment. Okay, and it'll also download the trend. Um, of your blood sugar for the previous eight hours. So you have all that information downloaded when you swipe it and it'll also give you the trend arrow. Okay, so that there's a lot of information from a simple swipe and uh, you don't have to do finger sticks to calibrate this device, which is great. That's a huge plus. So, um, you know, really people who are using this devices, you can check your blood sugar as many times as you want all day long and basically almost never have to check your blood sugar with a finger stick. It's always good to have that finger stick um, or your glucose meter available, you know, if you want to double check it, if you're not sure if, if the CGM is working correctly or just to, you know, check the accuracy. But really this is replacing finger sticks for you. The problem with the current Freestyle Libre is there's no alerts or alarms, which I talked about before. Um, but thankfully Abbott is going to fix that. So the recently approved Freestyle Libre 2, this was approved literally like days ago, um, this June, um, it basically adds Bluetooth connectivity to this device. And so it, that will allow for this data to be continuously sent to either the receiver, which is there in blue or your smartphone app. And you can turn on high and low glucose alerts if you want to. And again, hey, if you have this, I very much recommend you turn those alerts on, especially the low glucose alerts, some, somewhere around 80 or 90 maybe would be a good place to start. Um, but it's going to be a, a, an upgrade from the current Freestyle Libre, this Libre 2. And there's also improved accuracy. So, so look for this device. This one hopefully will be coming out quite soon. Another company that makes CGMs is Medtronic. This is their CGM. It's called the Guardian 3. This is their current CGM. Their sensor is worn for seven days, so it's not um, as long of a, a life as the Freestyle Libre. And the insertion is a little bit more complex. It has a two-hour warm-up period. And this um, can be a sort of a standalone CGM where you're just getting the, the information or for people who have an insulin pump, um, it can also send it to, to that. And this is another good device that includes, um, you know, trend arrows. Unfortunately, this CGM does require uh, currently calibrations. So you still have to do some finger sticks, like between at least two times a day to keep it calibrated. And the accuracy actually improves with more finger sticks. So if you're doing it three or four times a day, the accuracy is better. So this is one drawback of this specific device, but it does have alerts, alarms, the ability to share with people all these, all these features. The Medtronic's next um, CGM, um, sort of called right now Project Zeus, um, it's not yet approved. It's something that they're studying right now and, and will be out um, at some point in the future. Um, and this, this next CGM sensor will have improved accuracy and reduced finger stick calibrations. I think their goal is to basically have so you only have to calibrate the device on the very first day you put it on and then after that you won't need to so that's coming down the line uh, another really important um sort of player in this field is dexcom they're one of the one of the most well-known cgm uh, makers their sensor current sensor is worn for 10 days at a time it's really easy to put on it has about a two, it has a two-hour warm-up period and again it sends this information to either a smartphone or a standalone receiver um, including trend arrows the Dexcom CGM does not require any calibration, just like the Freestyle Libre. So you don't have to do any finger stick um, checks at all to have this thing up and running and keep it accurate. Okay, so that's a major benefit, I would say, of Dexcom and the Freestyle Libre. The Dexcom does have alerts and alarms and sharing and all that stuff. So it's kind of, in my opinion, it's probably the most advanced and has all of the features, um, but it may, it may be more features than some people need. And in, in that case, the Freestyle Libre might be the best option. Dexcom, their next um, CGM um, sensor we're calling G7 is kind of the next generation. It's not yet approved, um, but it's, it's being studied. This one is, is designed to be fully disposable, have a much slimmer profile. So you can kind of see in this picture, this is the size of the, the current one, and this is the one that they're working on. Uh, it'll have a longer wear time and a really easy application um, onto the skin. Um, so looking forward to the, the Dexcom G7 at some point down the line. And then lastly, um, but not least, is the Sensionics Eversense. This is an implantable uh, CGM, so it's a little bit different. 
this sensor is actually implanted um, uh, in a very simple in-office procedure right under the skin in the arm. <clears throat> and that lasts for 90, up to 90 days under the skin. It just kind of sits under there. And then you wear this little transmitter with a patch, like a little sticky patch right on the skin over that. And you can take that on and off whenever you want to. And then that sends the information to the, a mobile app on your smartphone. So you can get all the same sort of benefits of the CGM, but just a little bit of a different approach where you're not having to change out sensors every you know, seven to 14 days. That little sensor just stays under the skin for, uh, for up to 90 days. Next from Sensionics is the Eversense XL. And the XL is not for extra large, it's for um, extended life. And so this version of the Sensionics sensor Will, will be implanted and it'll stay in there for 180 days. So for half of a year, six months, it'll just stay under the skin and be able to provide that continuous glucose information. It's the same size and everything else is the same as the original ever since. This um, XL version is actually already approved in Europe. So they're working on approval here in the United States as well. Okay, so in closing, um, benefits of CGM use, you know, why is this something to think about using if you have type two diabetes? Well, it can improve your A1C, and it can improve your time and range. So that's that really good glucose that we like between 70 and 180 is sort of the normal definition of time and range. So we wanna um, you know, improve the amount of time you're spending in that range. And um, certainly it can help decrease hypoglycemia. So if you're someone who has, has low blood sugars or has had low blood sugars, you know, a CGM is probably the, you know, perhaps the most important piece of technology that can help with those. And ultimately, the goal of this, of this CGM technologies is not to give you more work or to have something else to carry around or deal with. It's actually to help you worry less about diabetes and make your life easier. And when people start using these, I think that's, in general, um, what they find. They find that, hey, these, these devices are easy to use. They, they help, you know, they reduce the amount of time you have to do finger stick. And they let you just know what's going on. So you can really, um, you know, make healthy decisions and, and take control of your diabetes. So this is one of the best tools to do exactly that. So with that, we'll close up. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, today. And um, I urge you to stay healthy, stay kind, and, and take care. Thank you. All right. So um, thanks, guys. I hope, hope you found that useful and informative. I know there was a lot of information sort of packed into that talk about all the different types of CGM um, and a lot of the things that are coming down the pipeline. But I, I think, you know, for a lot of people, I, I was trying to follow the chat and, you know, there are people in there who are already using CGM, both Dexcom and Freestyle Libre, and have really seen some of the benefits. And I think that's important to kind of to hear from other folks who are actually using these devices. And, um, you know, I think the big takeaways are that these technologies are here to make, hopefully make our lives easier and to help keep you safe and keep you healthier. And, um, you know, if you are new to CGM, you've never used them before and maybe even haven't really thought about them before, you know, I think the big takeaway is, you know, thinking about two different types, sort of the Dexcom type CGM, which is a little bit more intensive it's also a little bit more expensive and it gives you more information. It's, it's really um, a CGM that we tend to use in people, for example, who have, uh, you know, who are on insulin, who are on multiple daily insulin injections and need the alerts and alarms and all these different features that come with the Dexcom. So, you know, it's, it's also the same one that we use with most of our patients who have type one diabetes for all those same reasons. Uh, the Freestyle Libre as sort of an alternative is a little bit of a simpler, lighter, but very effective version of a CGM. It's also less expensive. So for a lot of people with type 2 diabetes, the Freestyle Libre is a great option. And it's sort of a, a replacement for doing finger sticks with some extra benefits. And especially now that the Freestyle Libre 2 is out, it actually came out just basically this week. So it's starting to be enrolled in pharmacies you know, there'll be some other benefits with that device as well. So um, let me just try to answer some of these questions from the Q&A. And, I, you know, I, I answered some as we went. I left a couple up that I wanted to specifically discuss, and there's kind of a theme for a few of them. So uh, one of the important themes, and this was what a lot of folks were talking about in the chat as well, were getting coverage for these, for, for CGMs. 
the, it, it, that's a big problem. And we, we know that's the case. It, it's kind of a struggle in some cases to get these covered or paid for by your insurance or by Medicare. And, um, you know, if you, or if you don't have insurance at all, you know, they can be quite expensive. So if you have, you know, if you're on insulin and you're doing multiple shots a day, then there's a good argument that you can take to your insurer and say, Hey, I'm on insulin. I'm on this intensive insulin regimen. Um, you know, maybe even sometimes I get low blood sugars. I need to have one of these CGMs. And a lot of times with some pushing and prodding by you and hopefully with your doctor's support, you can get some coverage for these. And there are certain specifications also that will allow coverage with Medicare. And I, at one point I posted a link, I think in the Q and A section about um, Medicare coverage. But if you want to see what the coverage specifics are for CGM for Medicare, just Google, you know, CGM Medicare coverage. And there's a good article actually on the Dexcom website that kind of talks you through the specific points that you'd have to qualify for. But the big takeaway is um, even if you're not on insulin and you think you may benefit, then, you know, take this to your physician, you know, have them order them for you. You know, you can call the pharmacy, see if it's covered. If it's not covered, sometimes your physician or provider may need to do a prior authorization. So just like anything else in medicine, it's not always easy to get these things covered. But a lot of times with multiple efforts and kind of pushing for it, it, it can happen. And thankfully, over time, we're getting more and more people covered with these devices. So I think that's really important. So that's one, one big thing. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about um, was there's a couple questions about sort of the accuracy of CGM. And in general, when these are studied, they're very accurate and they have an accuracy. Um, they have sort of a special statistical term for it, but the accuracy is roughly about 10% within what your actual blood sugar is. And it's basically the same accuracy that most of the finger stick glucose meters also have. So they're all very similar in their accuracy. But if you're at home and you're wearing a continuous glucose monitor, and maybe you're also doing, you're checking it with some finger sticks, you may find that those numbers don't always match up exactly. So there's a few different reasons for that. You know, occasionally there is a bad sensor. Maybe you put on a CGM sensor and it's just not working right. The numbers are way off. In which case you want to probably take that off, get a new sensor, call the manufacturer, tell them, you know, hey, this sensor didn't work, send me a fresh one. Um, but, you know, a lot of the times this is just some normal variability that you may see some differences of 10, 20, 30 percent or, you know, 30 up to 30 or 40 even blood sugar differences, depending on where your blood sugar is starting between a, a, a finger stick glucose and the CGM. And quite frankly, you know, the CGM is probably just as accurate as the finger stick. So, it's your guess is as good as mine. If you did two of those things and they're different, which one's the right one? So it's kind of hard to say sometimes. Um, so there was, you know, uh, someone who is anonymous said, hey, I ate 40 minutes ago. Uh, don't be shocked by my numbers. I just poked myself and my blood sugar readings are 186. So this is 186 blood sugar, pretty good actually, 40 minutes after eating. But my Dexcom says my blood sugar is 154. So that's a difference, you know, of about 40 in, sorry. 30 in the blood sugars. And so that's, you know, it's a pretty big difference. And so, you know, that may be partly, you know, they're asking, is that because of where I wear my CGM? So that's possible. Sometimes people can wear the CGMs on the back of the arms, sometimes on the abdomen, sometimes sort of in the flank, the lower back, wherever you have a little bit of sort of fat, basically, where that CGM can sit and that sensor can read the blood sugars. Um, but realistically, that is not an, you know, an atypical difference between the, the blood glucose that you would get in a finger stick and what you might see on the CGM. So, you know, um, that, that's just something to be aware of. There's going to be some variability. Um, and the one other reason that that could be the case is the CGM tends to lag behind in time by about 15 or 20 minutes uh, from the actual blood glucose. And that's because it's not in, it's not testing the blood exactly. It's testing the, the, the tissue, sort of the fatty tissue and the, and the juices that are floating around in that area. So it takes maybe 10, 15 minutes for the, for the, for the blood sugar to actually match what's going on in, in that, that area where you're wearing the CGM. So most of the time that doesn't matter because the blood sugars are moving slowly enough. But if your blood sugar, let's say you just ate 40 minutes ago and your blood sugar is shooting up, or maybe it's coming down after you gave insulin or went for a walk or whatever, if your blood sugar is changing rapidly, then the difference 
between your actual blood sugar and the CGM blood sugar will be wider because the CGM is just catching up. So it's a little bit behind. So that's another explanation for why there might be some variability. So Lisa Young had a similar question saying, hey, sometimes you know the difference between my Dexcom and, and my finger stick can be like five, which is great, right? Basically the exact same, or sometimes it's a huge difference, like up to up to a hundred. So, you know, that's a really big difference. If it's off by a hundred, then, you know, it's probably a good idea to repeat your finger stick check, make sure that your Dexcom is working well. Um, you know, you can calibrate these devices. Each of them have different sort of calibration abilities and requirements. So the, the newest Dexcom, the G6, and the Freestyle Libre don't require calibration at all. But you can put a calibration blood sugar if you need to. So if you're really finding that things are off, you know, or if you're questioning the you know, the number that your CGM is showing or you're feeling funny, always check your blood sugar. It's always a good thing to do. Um, again, you know, uh, Burgess brought up the question of cost. You know, if you're paying out of pocket, these can be super expensive. So, um, you know, the Freestyle Libre is probably the least expensive. So if you're paying out of pocket and paying cash, then the Freestyle Libre is probably your best bet. And, you know, but usually you can find it for about $60 to up to $75 per month which would be two sensors that would cover you for a 30 day period. So that's if you're paying, paying cash. And so, so it does add up. Um, and, and I do think that the cost will continue to go down and more insurances will continue to cover it. But you know, this is sort of an ongoing fight. So it's something that we continue to work on. And, and the more you sort of advocate for it, the more insurers start to hear about it and actually pay attention to it. So I always encourage you to reach out to your insurance if you have insurance and um, you know, try to get coverage. Um, Roger asked about, will the Freestyle Libre communicate with a Medtronic pump? So Medtronic's a little bit different right as of now because Medtronic um, has their own CGM. And so the Medtronic pump will only communicate with a Medtronic CGM. So they kind of keep it in-house, so to speak. So some of the CGMs like the Dexcom will communicate with, with different pumps. Like you could use it with a tandem pump or a different type of insulin pump. Um, but right now for us, sort of Medtronic is just Medtronic. So I think over time that may change too, as you know, different people like to use, maybe you want a Medtronic pump, but you want a Dexcom CGM or whatever. So it's going to be important. These companies are more and more trying to sort of make these interoperable where they can work with different systems. So again, an ongoing issue and, and people are working on that. Um, yeah. Um, Brenda mentioned I'm using the Freestyle Libre and she absolutely loves it. So again, you know, I just think it's really a great option for people, especially with people with type two diabetes, you know, who are using it as a replacement for finger sticks. And if you don't have a problem, if you're not using insulin, you know, multiple times throughout the day, you don't really have issues with low blood sugars. So you don't need the alerts or alarms that come with the Dexcom. Then the Freestyle Libre is a great option. And the newer, uh, the newer Freestyle Libre, the Freestyle Libre 2, will have some of those alerts and alarms, so it'll kind of cover that as well. So I think it's a really important um, way to go. Carol Clark talks about, um, she, she you know, discovered that she is having something called the, the dawn phenomenon, where the blood sugars ramp up early in the morning, sort of before you even wake up. And that's, what, that's the type of thing that you'd never know uh, without a continuous glucose monitor. So, you, you know, you can't, you know, you don't really know what your blood sugar is doing overnight. You don't know what it's doing between meals and all this if you're just doing finger sticks. Even if you're poking your finger seven times a day, which is a ton, you're not getting all this information. So, you know, there's a lot of people sometimes are really surprised what's going on with their blood sugars when they're not checking them and when they're not seeing it. And it's so easy to do with a, with a CGM. Um, so a lot of these are about insurance, which I understand. Um, so um, yeah, Kathy, you know, Kathy says my endocrinologist has never suggested a CGM. I'm glad, you know, you learned about them. It's, it's always something that to, to, to think about and maybe bring it up with your doctor. See, hey, is this something that would be useful for me? Um, read about the different options and kind of have some idea. And I definitely encourage you guys to go in and speak uh, with, with the reps. Um, you know, I don't, I don't get paid by any of the CGM companies, so I don't have any financial benefit from them, but we really think that they help people. So which one you choose, is completely up to you and that's really an individual choice. So go, you know, talk to the different companies, read about the CGMs and see which one might be the best. Um, uh, Winston Jefferson asked, where's the best place to wear the CGM? And again, that's kind of depends on the person. Some of the CGMs have specific places that they recommend putting them, but it just has to be in, you know, in places where you have enough, a little bit of, of fat. So if you're 
you know, if you're a normal person that has a little bit of fat, you know, tissue, then it's pretty easy to find a place. But a lot of people do like them on the back of the arms. The first go-to place really is just on the abdomen, on the belly, because it's easy to put them on and off. Uh, you know, you just want to kind of avoid having it right on your belt line or someplace like that where it's going to rub or cause you irritation. So just find a place that's comfortable and out of the way. Um, okay. So great, John, I guess I got your question answered. So that, I'm going to wrap it up right there, guys. We have about four minutes until the last talk, which is from Carrie Sparling. That'll be on a different link. Um, I really encourage you guys to join in. That'll kind of wrap up the day. It's been a lot of fun. I hope, I hope everyone's learned a lot. Carrie is a wonderful speaker she, and she's a lot of fun. So uh, please check that out. It'll be at 2.30 uh, Central Time. So come on right up in about three, three minutes on the other link. Okay, thank you guys so much.